I am ready. <laughs> That's so good. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone, for patience. That's a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you so much, the committee, to allow me to present my case study today. Uh, my name is Angelou. I'm from, uh, coming from an international new and joint center in Abu Dhabi, United Arab Emirates. And today I want to show you the example of the unique case, maybe for some of you it's not so unique, for me very interesting, not only structurally and the process of physiotherapy, but psychologically, how we can work with the patient and what are the patient concerns in regards to for the surgery and the rehab process. I have nothing to disclose. And of course, everyone knows the NPF reconstruction and how it goes from where it's going and what are the outcomes in majority of cases. And the timing of return to sport and the timing to return for the normal functionality. But what is happening if we have a different case and if we assess the patient as an individual not as the general case itself so this is my patient and uh, we can see here the x-ray before and after the surgery so the patient why, why she is so unique currently she is 36 years old a very active woman and her first surgery of the MPFL reconstruction was done when she was 15 years old. Before that, she had a lot of episodes of the patella dislocation. And since the age of 15, when was the first surgery performed, just the MPFL reconstruction, then she psychologically she stopped doing anything which is related to sport. So very active person stopped doing anything because she cannot walk normally on the stairs because she got a dislocation of the patella. She cannot normally run because she got a dislocation of the patella. 15 years old woman who wants to, a girl, teenager, who wants to go and dance, who wants to go and go for a party, who wants to attend a different kind of activities, go to a sport, go to the gym, wear the high heels at the end of the day. She cannot do that because every single time when she's doing something like this, the patella is going to be dislocated and it's severe pain, swelling, and limitations. The, after the surgery, was the first one was everything almost normal and almost okay until the moment of time when, in the age of 24, she got another one patella dislocation with the NPFL rupture, the secondary rupture of the graft. And in this time, she was doing almost nothing. She was just walking on the stairs, and she was doing it in a very fast mode. And uh, from that moment, she was living like this, no running, no jumping, no bicycle, no activity as a sport activity itself, no participation in the social big events, like parties, because that's required sometimes to dance until the age of 36, when, she, again, she fell down and she ruptured the graft again. And in that moment of time, she came to our clinic and was qualified for the surgery, not only the NPFL reconstruction, but also the trochlea plasticity. Small one, but still. So those are the, pic those are the pictures of the patient after the surgery and, and already performed the rehab process. So what is for us as physios important in all of this case? It's of course how and which muscle is activated. 15 years pass, more, more than 15 years pass. So we can see the difference between the muscles activation, the quadriceps muscle activation. So one of those muscles is particularly very important for us 
the first one is, of course, uh, medial head of the uh, quadriceps muscle, okay, BMO. And another one is lateral head. So which one of them, if they're in a big disbalance, the patella will be all the time pushed into the lateral side. Another one, it's a scar. So we need to mobilize the scar, we need to mobilize the patella mobility, we need to mobilize the soft tissues, and we need to focus, this, that this is the question for all the physios on which we should focus first, to, to, to increase the strength of the VMO and start to push the VMO to work as hard as possible from the day one, or we should focus on mobilizing and relaxation of the vastus lateralis. From my practice, I am starting from the fascia mobilization, from the soft, mo soft tissues mobilization to relax the vastus lateralis before I will start to do the, any attempts of reconstruction and rebuild of the Another very interesting and for me always in hand, it's in DIBA, that's electricity with the radio frequency, which is activating the cells and it's working very good for the patient. They can relax, they can, the DIBA is stimulating the cells to open up and it's a better blood flow. Better blood flow, we have better nutrition, more oxygen, and the patient is, the muscles are can relax faster, and then, then the whole process can increase, will be more productive. It doesn't mean that the recovery process will be faster. So instead of a one year, it will take you three months. Not for sure, no. But uh, it will be more effective. And what is there else important? It's fascia. As is proved by Luigi Stecco and Carla Stecco already in a lot of documentations that and scientific papers that the fascia with it has their own nervous system. It can create the tension and if we have the more hyaluronin, hyaluronin within the layers of the fascia density, more dense, then we can have some adhesions, we can have more, more pain in the parent area, which again needs to be mobilized and again needs to be smoothly working together with the muscle fibers and between the fascia layers to increase the smooth flow and gliding between the fascia layers. Another technique which I use and like within the, to relax the vastus lateralis, that's the dry capping. Here we have the electric example of the dry capping, which works for patients amazingly because it's, it's giving a different, it regulates the tension on the caps. 15 years, patient was not going on the bicycle, was not able to run, was not able to jump. There were a big psychological barrier, even if we had an almost full range of motion since the day one, because the patient had no problem with the range of motion, still we had psychological barrier. So we need to convince the patient to do a lot of things, to work on itself, to start to go for that, to start to believe that it's possible and nothing will happen. So here the patient is two months after the surgery and she already convinced herself to start to do the bicycle and start to use her leg in a normal way. The foam, ro foam roller, I like to use not as a substitute for my own hands as the physio, more like a homework exercise to convince the patient that she is able to use different devices for herself at home to relax the vastus lateralis, to mobilize the fascia layers, to decrease the tension. If she does so. When she was convinced enough, she was able to do some self stretch, the quadriceps muscle, which is again very important for the mobility, to not have any restrictions. If we're talking about the hip mobility and how to find the VMO, 
in this kind of cases, when the VMO muscle long time was not present in a patient's life and an activity, I like to use a special pin to be able. A special pin to exactly find the proper place to place the electrode to effectively activate whatever the remaining fibers we have at the beginning of the rehab process. Then the patient can work together with the electricity. We found already the place. The patient can work together and do a lot of exercises together with the electricity instead of just providing a simple exercises and the loading on the leg can be if it's safely applied and it can be really started from as soon as possible if the patient has no pain and no other barriers. If we are talking of the psychological barrier again, we need to build the balance, stability, and a recognition. The patient should rely on the leg and should convince herself, and we should help them to convince themselves that the leg is reliable. If the patient will not consider the limp as reliable, it will never give 100% of their own motivation to start the rehab and to gain the muscles. So basically, no matter what we will give to the patient, no matter how big it electricity, no matter how many hours of rehab, no matter how many good innovation techniques, until the patient will not convince itself, and we should help him in this, to rely on the leg, there will be no effect. And this is same patient six months from the surgery from now, so the picture is first done recently. Psychological barrier was broken, so the patient was relying on the leg. So she started progressing faster from the moment when she started to rely on the leg. When we gain more muscles, when we gain more stability, more balance on the leg, the patient was able to run and to really acknowledge the limp and her own body, which is more very important. In another way, there will be no progress into this level. Six months and she was not running for 15 years. Home message. Case assessment is one of the most important for me in my practice, in this kind of cases, because everyone is individual, everyone has their own time to gain confidence, to gain range of motion, to be out of pain, to understand what we are actually want from them as the physio. We cannot put one particular protocol for everyone because everyone, as I said, is different. So the case assessment and understanding of the patient, understanding what kind of goals the patient has in the future, long term, short term. What do you want to do? Maybe you want to go the horse riding after three months or maybe you want to go extreme sports in the future or run the marathon. This is very important to understand what the patient wants. It's, not, it's less important what we want, it's more important what the patient wants in the future. Of course, the range of motion without the pain, VMO restoration in the proper timing because sometimes the vastus lateralis is blocking us. Delay come back to sport if the pain exists. This one we all know, of course. Thank you so much for your attention and I'm sorry for the technical delay at the beginning. I think so much. Thank you, Dr. Angelion.